Wimbledon lost to Peterborough United on Tuesday, despite taking the lead. Number four, Warren Barton taking the ring road to find a way through to the goal scorer, Paul McGee. The Wimbledon don't really seem to be at home at Selhurst Park somehow. They've lost three times there now and lost half their support in the move. Ken Charlery equalised almost immediately for Peterborough, who provided a healthy share of a crowd of just over 2,000. Within four minutes of equalising, the third division side took a first leg advantage. A chance spurned and then taken by Worrell Sterling. Ray Harford kept the Wimbledon players in the dressing room for an hour after the game. Neil Warnock sprung a few cup surprises in his time. His Notts County side were on the receiving end at Port Vale. Martin Foyle stabbed in the first. And on the hour, Brian Mills doubled that lead with a super turn and a cool finish right out of the top draw. It was all Notts County though after that and they did take something back to the East Midlands. Paul Rideout put himself about and Tommy Johnson pounced two minutes from time. James could and should have been beaten in the opening minutes of last night's first leg. With Pat Nevin restored to the team, Everton rarely mounted concerted pressure against the stubborn five-man Watford midfield, but they did create chances. Three minutes after the restart, the breakthrough. Ward with a pace and the control to pierce Watford and still pick out Beardsley's call. And at the second time of asking, he picked his spot for his seventh goal in just five games. Ritchie took his chance by taking his chances in last night's second round Rumbelow's tie with third division Torquay. A quick flick of the short cropped head and it broke the deadlock after 32 minutes. It was the only goal of the first half and despite it being Ritchie's night it was a memorable one too for Graham Sharp notching his first for the club after a nine and a half game wait. It was followed just three minutes later when a left wing break by you know who nearly put Sharp in for his second before the crossbar, a parried Paul Kane shot gave Ritchie his second of the night. But perhaps the best goal followed. Nick Henry with confidence high. Similarities perhaps between this and a famous John Barnes goal. Well, for Messrs Socrates and Zico, substitute Ozell and Loram. Lovely goal nonetheless. Rick Holden was a constant torment for tiring Torquay and it seemed he'd given Ritchie his hat-trick. But forced wide, he at least managed to tee up Mike Milligan for his first goal of the season. No, it's not a replay of the previous goal because this time Holden's service was carefully guided in by our hero for his hat-trick. He knew just who to thank and Rick Holden led the applause. Well, the two of them then casually exchanged passes before, equally casually, Ritchie made it 7-0 with an exquisite chip. Torquay added a consolation, but the League Cup super scorer is back. And what a flying start Wigan had. Phil Jones taking on and then rounding two defenders, and young Gary Worthington showing why he's a chip off the old block, following in the footsteps of his illustrious Uncle Frank. But a lead short-lived. United's Dane Whitehouse forcing Nigel Adkins to parry, Brian Dean illustrating what the fuss is all about. But in the offing, another hint of vintage Worthington. Seizing on a mistake, seemingly going too wide, a super turn and the easy bit for Darren Patterson. Then another well-connected relative in on the action. Michael Lake, brother of Manchester City's Paul, carved out the chance and Dean certainly used his head. Gibson, who oh dare, straight to Davis, could he be made to pay for that, this is right, that's a great effort, and he scored, from absolutely nothing, Ian Wright has paid off the first tiny part of that huge transfer fee. You feel that overall Leicester almost deserved to get something out of this game. And that's that, and they've got something, and it's the captain, Steve Walsh, who's beaten David Seaman, and Leicester have got what they deserve. David Burrows. 
He's got in a useful cross, rush from nil! Four six-footers for Liverpool to worry about inside that penalty area. Cranston! And stuck a level! And four six-footers was one too many. It's Marsh, in towards Rosenthal. Nickel trying to make something of it. Rosenthal back for Tanner. Had to strike it, gets the crossbar, and in by Rush. Liverpool back in front. Ian Rush is second of the night. Just under 20 minutes to play. Fowler ball towards Kelly. Now with a cross to cover, he short changed Grobola. Tony Kelly has equalised. Bale had to watch the bounce, and now Salako. Good skills from Salako, but Hartnell keeping some shape. And a nice ball down the line there as well for Osborne. And it's there, it's the opening goal by Bright. Baker pitching the bounce and hooking the ball in the middle. This is a difficult one. Dalton is there and Honor is there. And Brian Honor, that's a superb goal. It's the equaliser for Brian Honor. And Sheringham. Gainer leaving it. Back Black leaving it. Trying to give Wone the opportunity. And Brown makes the challenge. And the referee immediately waves away the claims for the penalty. Well, everyone seemed to be leaving responsibility for everybody else. Phil Brown was certainly sure with the tackle. Well, there was no doubt in the referee's mind about that not being a penalty, and suddenly Roy Keane is completely in the clear. Great save first time, and it's gone in the second. Aimed towards Sheringham, got the touch too. Here's Gaynor, will score surely. Took his time about it, but did. Here's away, Gaynor. Won't play the ball towards Roy Keane on one of those advanced runs. He's got in front of Burke. Keeps possession. Little break for Kingsley Black. And it's gone in. Yeah. Nice pass striking his own man, David Reeves. Parker to Sheringham. The turn. Parker's continued the run. Gary Parker. Little break for Tommy Gaynor who just about squeezes it in for number four. Birmingham City haven't lost away this season. Ian Rogerson's third minute header put them well on the way to preserving that record at Kenilworth Road. Three minutes into the second half, Luton drew level. Matthew Jackson's cross, Phil Gray quickest and sharpest in the box. But it was back to square one soon after. Again, Luton found wanting in the air and Nigel Gleghorn makes the most of it. Another far post header, another piece of poor defending, and substitute Kurt Nogan salvages a draw for Luton. They'll have to battle even harder at St Andrews. There's no frills about the way Cambridge play, but United are playing with an assurance befitting league leader status. Neil Webb's back to form. Unfortunately, Webb later went off injured in the first half. It's route one for Cambridge. The odd flick here, glance there. Michael Cheatham got his angles confused and possibly should have done better. Alex Ferguson's been careful to shield Ryan Giggs. It's certainly impossible to shackle the talent, though. On a substitute, he provided the one true sparkling moment of the first half, a real grace and poise about his play and his finishing. His presence has certainly prickled Brian McClare's competitive instincts. Two for McClare on Saturday, shouldering responsibility again tonight, stretching United's lead. But then that other prolific striker, Steve Bruce, got into the groove again. 19 last season, three now this season. Still celebrates like a defender. Early promise from Chester. An unintended backheader and Tony Coton forced into action. Could the Chester dream come true? At 0-0 early in the second half, a Graham Barrow header again put pressure on Coton. The home crowd not happy. Then the Chester nightmare, a Niall Quinn flick on, and David White's header showing Manchester City the way. But the Chester hopes lived on, carved out by David Pugh, finished off by Gary Bennett. 
a chance to dream for the 27-year-old. Then the City Hoodoo was lifted. A Hughes corner, a Redmond flick on, and Quinn volleys home. And the spectre of an upset was banished when White crossed low and Quinn slid home his second. The home crowd not too happy, the manager relieved. A solid start to the season, Tranmere with only one defeat so far and taking the lead after 52 minutes through John Aldridge, his 11th goal of the season. The cross came from Tony Thomas. The Chelsea have made a habit of getting late equalisers so far this season. That was Kevin Wilson, Dennis Wise with a touch there and the immaculate Andy Townsend. Now, if you're a fourth division side playing away at first division opposition, the last thing you want is to concede an early goal. So when Robert Rosario scored after just 90 seconds, Dave Sutton must have been hoping for a full start. Andy Flanders had one good chance for Rochdale soon after, but headed over the bar. Rosario made it 2-0 midway through the first half. Kevin Gallagher hit the bar twice in the second half before making it 3-0. And when the Rochdale keeper, David Williams, missed a punch, Lloyd McGrath's lob made the final score, Coventry 4, Rochdale 0. 